elections over in the UK, the Conservatives won form the coalition government and completely whack a lot of these socialistic programs. They could do it unilaterally without having to vote. We cannot do it. We don't have that right in Washington to do it. We'd have to have the President Nathan of the United States, 60 votes in the Senate, and a two thirds vote in the House to turn this thing around. But at least we can slow it down and stop it this year and give us a shot in two years to win this thing. The race in the second district, and I hope that Joe will be here. Joe operates still on what we call SST, um, that means Senate Standard Time. We always late, and so he's um, he should be here shortly, I would hope. But that race could be very, very close. And the main reason is you've got demographic changes in the second congressional district. We've held that seat, Mark, since 1965. That's been a Republican in the second congressional district since 1965. Albert Watson, in 1965, was 70 Floyd Spence, from 1970 to 2001 when he died. It's probably the only seat in the, in the entire South that has been consistent with Republican for almost four decades. This year is a difficult race for a variety of reasons. One, the anti-incumbency factor out loud that Kenny Bing and I were talking about. Secondly, the demographics have changed. Third, you've got a guy who's running, who has $2 million in the bank, actually $3 million, who has, has spent three, if you have a challenge of spending $3 million, or they can create any kind of image they want to create. And they've, they've been able to do it. And the guy has run a fairly effective campaign. But if we lose this seat, if we lose the seat, we'll probably never, never get it back because we'll go through the reapportionment process next year uh, for, the next, for the next election cycle. And so it's vitally important. And let me mention this to you. Jim Harrison called you, Mr. Chairman, tonight. He is not here. He's on another political event tonight. He's the chair of the House Judiciary Committee. This reapportionment process is going to be hugely important to us who are conservatives in South Carolina in two years. We'll, we'll start the process actually next year hope they conclude in the fall of next year. But some of these lines are really iffy. And I can give you a prime example in Richmond County. Several years ago, guys, 10 years ago, we the delegation that were eight were Democrats, seven Republicans. We've got four Republicans left of the delegation now in Richmond County. We had two Republican senators. We have one left now, and mine is a, it's, it's a very difficult district for a Republican to run in. My point being that if they have control of the governor's mansion, if they have control of the governor's mansion, and if they, and we send a plan over, and this actually happened in 2001 when Jim Hodges was governor. We passed a reapportionment plan. It was a fair plan. Most of the Democrats signed off on it. We sent it to Hodges. He vetoed the plan. Then they filed another plan, a Democratic plan, that would have nailed me and just several other Republicans to the wall. This is extremely important that we elect a Republican governor uh, next Tuesday. And the reason why is that individual, Nikki, will have the veto power or to sign off on the plan that we send over there. South Carolina will be getting an additional congressional seat. So we will have seven congressional seats. If we have a Republican majority in the General Assembly and a Republican governor, we can draw probably close to six of the seven seats could be Republican seats. And that will have a tremendous impact on what we do in Washington. So this is vitally important. The Senate. The state is 27-19 Republican Democratic now. If they have control, they can easily draw a majority Senate dis uh, district plan for the final of state. So we're at risk on this. This election is just just very very critical. And I, again, I want this is a very difficult county to be involved in the Republican Party. I know that we have gone from majority status 15 years ago to minority status now. And I thank y'all for all being involved. And Chair's waiting that which means he wants me to stop. And I'm going to stop and I'm going to leave, but the reason I'm going to leave is my son's are the Boy Scouts. He's got a scout meeting tonight. He's on the, on the verge, Bill, of getting his Eagle designation. My oldest son's an Eagle, and that's a, a very high priority. But again, thank you all for being involved in this. Let's go win next Tuesday. Thank you. Yeah.